Hi everyone. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about what are the comparisons of vSphere key providers. OK, so before jumping to the comparison, let's understand how many key providers we have. Currently, we have within the vSphere, we have three supported key providers. One is vSphere native key provider. Second one is standard key provider and third one is trusted key provider. So you may have an uh, idea where we can find these three options. When we log into our vCenter server, we, we can select the vCenter, go to the configure tab, under configure tab, go to the security section, and there is a tab for key providers. When we select the key providers, we can see add key providers. That is add native key provider. That is the first one, vSphere native key provider. And the second one is standard key provider. And the standard key provider means we have a, any remote KMS server, key provider, another name is key management server. When you have a remote key management server, that remote key management server information, we can add it here as a standard key provider. And the third one is trusted key provider. Trusted key providers we can find under the trust, under security, trust authority, we can see the trusted key provider. But the only difference is for the vSphere native key provider, standard key provider, even our ESX host hardware do not have a TPM device. Trusted platform module 2.0 microcontroller chip, no need to be installed on our server motherboard for this first two scenarios. But when it comes to trusted key provider recommended from VMware is our server hardware must installed with a microchip device that is TPM 2.0 trusted platform module 2.0 microcontroller chip must be installed in our servers that is called a trusted key provider. OK, so hope you got the high level view where we can see these three key providers. Now quickly jump into our concept. How to establish a trust within the VSPS 6.7, 7 and 8.0? Normally the key idea of key provider is we can create a key provider either VSPA or native key provider or standard key provider. It will help you to encrypt our vCenter server, ESXi host and associated all the virtual machine. The purpose of this encryption using key provider is it will enhance the security in our virtual machine guest OS and it will also reduce the risk in our guest operating systems. For example, let's quickly log into our lab system. Just now we notice key providers, select vCenter, configure key provider, add key providers, two options, native key provider, standard key provider. And third one we can see under the trusted authority. Currently we do not have a TPM device in our lab servers. So that's the reason we, I'm unable to show you the trusted key provider here. Suppose if I create a new virtual machine or any existing virtual, let's say we have two VMs, one AD server, one vCenter server. If I select any one virtual machine, go to the edit settings and VM option. If I want to encrypt your device, it requires a key management server. Key management server, another name is key provider. Without key provider, we cannot encrypt a virtual machine. So our virtual machine do not have a encryption means if this vmdk file it can be there is a chances of this data whenever we have a backup or if this vmdk file is shared to any any other other third party person they can able to access the vmdk but if the vmdk file is encrypted no one cannot decrypt until unless there is a authorized person so this encryption process we can use three methods either you can use a vSphere native one or standard key provider or trusted one to encrypt our virtual machine for testing purpose let's quickly use the native key provider let's say native key provider name is vSphere shortcut v yes native n key provider kp-01 and this below option is only if you have a tpm device so we do not have uncheck so key provider is created default status is not backed up so we must take the backup so once it is backup we can save 
and the status become as active. When you have a TPM, when you have a vSphere native key provider is created, we can able to change the encryption policies because we already created a KMS server. So when I see the encryption, we have an option to change it to VM encryption policy. Earlier, it says there is no KMS, but when I create a key provider, we have an option to change it to the encryption policy. Okay, once you click on okay, our VM is encrypted. What it is saying is the attempted operation cannot perform the current state is power on. If you want to modify the encryption policy, we have to turn off the virtual machine power off the VM and then only we can change the encryption policy. Okay, so this point hope you, you we got an idea now. In this same point description here, we sent a server handles attestation. So it will do the all the validation and authorizations and we sent us our handles the secrets and we sent us our running in a VM inside the cluster. Even our vCenter is running within our cluster, our lab system also, our vCenter server running within a cluster, one of the VM. And no impacts for failing attestation. This attestation information we can see under the, when you select the cluster or vCenter server, go to the monitor tab. Under security, we can see the attestation information. But if you want to do the attestation validation, we must have a physically TPM devices. Then only we can see the attestation status for all the host and also the attestation by under TPM version. Current latest TPM version is 2.12. Okay, so now let's see the another key point is how does we treat vSphere Trust Authority automates enforces the rules. The another key provider is trusted key provider using the VTA host, vSphere Trust Authority host. And this is the third method we can use that station. And if I just change the diagram previously, key provider only help to do the test our ESX host. But when it comes to the VTA host, it will pull the keys from the key provider keys and it will help to attest our all the ESX host validate. So attestation is a prerequisite for access to secrets, KMS credential sealed to host state and a trusted host managed by keys and KMS connections, okay? And can encrypt vCenter server. Using VTA host, we can also encrypt the vCenter server and gain isolation. This VTA cluster, we should keep it as a isolated state. Now, it's the time to talk about all these three key providers main comparisons the first one vSphere native key provider when i compare with the first one external key server required just know i created vSphere native key provider without external key provider server or key management server so that means for this vSphere native provider definitely no and quick setup, yes. Just now we did in our lab, it's very quickly we, we created the key provider server. And works only with vSphere, yes. It won't support for a third party hypervisors. And a TPM on ESX host, even in our lab host, we don't have a TPM. Without TPM, we, we can configure. So TPM is not required. And vSAN, our VMware products, I just took the three comparisons. For virtual SAN, vSphere native key provider is supported yes and SRM site recovery manager also it supported and vSphere replication also it supported so I keep it as yes and another option is standard key provider that means it's a remote key management server for this remote key management server if you compare with the native provider we without remote server we can configure but the standard key provider definitely we need a KMS server yes and quick setup definitely answer is no because it KMS server is a physical appliances we have to first get the physical appliances connected in our server rack and cable it there will be a installation work and also the appliance must be installed and cable connection the setup is not easy so that's why we mention as it's not a quick setup and works only with vSphere? No, this standard key provider we can also use for a other physical service as well. Not only VMware hypervisor, we can use for a third party hypervisors also. And TPM required without TPM also we can configure. And it's how about this one supporting for VMware products? vSAN it supported, SRM also it supported, vSphere replication also it supported. And 
now trusted key provider that means the server running with the tpm devices those external key server required yes definitely for trusted key provider we should maintain a separate trusted key host cluster so that's the answer is yes and quick setup no definitely this is also not a quick setup and works only with vSphere answer is no this trusted key provider we can also use for other third party devices and tpm on esxi host so currently it required a tpm this is the important point for trusted key provider tpm device must be required on trusted host and also the cluster and how about vSphere products, VMware products, sorry. vSAN is supported and the site recovery manager also supported, but vSphere replication currently it's not supported. Maybe we may expect in the future release versions it may support, but current status is not supported. Okay, so hope you got an idea how we can compare all the key management servers, three types of key management servers within the vSphere era. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Gnant Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.